lovely smooth zooms and even pans in just a few quick clicks. That's why we love the dynamic zoom feature within DaVinci Resolve. There's tons of uses for it, it's dead quick, it's dead easy and it does have some secret little nuggets of juicy information which you might have missed. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video, dynamic zooms. So let's kick things off with the absolute basics. So I've got this footage on my timeline of my stupid little face and we want to do a dynamic zoom. So first of all, give it a click on your timeline so that it's highlighted in red like so. Then open up the inspector by clicking on inspector, top right hand corner. Scroll down until you see dynamic zoom and then click on the word dynamic zoom to open up these additional controls which we'll come back to in a second. And then simply click this little switch so that it goes red and it turns on the dynamic zoom. Then if we put a playhead at the beginning, hit play, straight away we've got a real nice simple zoom out. So that zoom will occur over the duration of the clip. So the start of the zoom will be at the start of the clip and the end of the zoom will be at the end of the clip. So the speed is linked to the length of the clip on the timeline. But you can get around that by using adjustment clips which we're going to come back to in a moment. If you need to swap the zoom, so at the moment this is doing a zoom out, if you want it to be a zoom in, within the inspector we simply click this little swap button and it's going to swap it to be a zoom in. So anytime we can just swap it from an in or an out like so. To control the actual zoom amount, underneath your preview window, click on this little drop down right here and then click on dynamic zoom and then you'll get these on screen controls will appear. The green box is your starting position and the red box is your end position. So we're going to start full screen and we're going to end up on this red box, which means we're doing a zoom in. If we were to hit play, you can see we're doing a zoom in. To swap them around, as mentioned, hit swap and you'll see I'll actually swap the boxes around for you. To change the amount of zoom, you simply change the size of the box. So if we want this to be a much greater zoom out, let's put this right in the middle, right on my face, hit play and there we go. Now I'm going to jump over to this next clip and we're going to do the same thing. Toggle on the dynamic zoom. We'll open up the controls that we're already on, but there you go. We give that a click and we're going to zoom this in. So this one's going to be doing a zoom out. It's going to start on this green and end on this red. If we wanted it to start from this lady over here, we could actually move the box. So if we hit play, it's zooming from that point. And again, we could do a swap. So now it's going to zoom into her instead. And there you go. So you can move these around, move either the boxes to get them wherever you want them. Quick tip, if you've messed around, you've moved these, you've got the sizes all weird and you kind of want to reset it. Over in the inspector, just to the right of dynamic zoom, you click this little icon and it will reset it to the default. So then you can mess around and start again. Now one super quick last bonus tip talking about the basics. It's kind of annoying when you're scrubbing through your timeline you can't actually see what the zoom is going to do. And that's simply because we have these on-screen controls still turned on. If we were to hit play, we'd see it, but when we're paused, we don't see it. All you need to do, click on this little icon to get rid of the controls. Now we can actually see what we're doing when we're scrubbing along our timeline. Super simple, easy peasy. They're kind of all the absolute essential basics. Next up, we're gonna talk about easing. So by default, the dynamic zoom is linear which as you can see at the moment, it will be zooming in or out at an absolute constant speed. There's no acceleration or deceleration. Now that totally works, but it looks a little bit meh. Animations generally look better if you put an acceleration curve either in or out. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna adjust the easing. Unfortunately, it's dead easy. So we'll stick with this clip as we're zooming out here. In the inspector, You've got the controls, you've got dynamic zoom, we have dynamic zoom easing, it's linear by default as mentioned. If we change this to be ease in, what it's going to do is start off really slow and then accelerate as it goes. So it gets faster throughout the actual zoom. If we change it to ease out, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to start really fast and then decelerate and get super smooth right up until the end point. And if we change that to ease in and out, it's going to do an S curve where it'll have a real nice gradual beginning, fast in the middle, and then a nice gradual end at the end. Simple. Now, as mentioned, the speed is linked to the length of the clip. Now, sometimes that's not what you want. Maybe you want to do the dynamic zoom over part of the clip, or maybe you just want to adjust the speed independently or whatever. 
And that's why, generally speaking, I actually recommend that you do dynamic zooms using an adjustment clip. They work in exactly the same way, but they just have a couple of additional benefits. While we're here, I'm also going to show you a slightly faster, slightly more convenient way to do all of the things I've already shown you. So we've got another quick clip here and we want to do the same thing. So this time around, we're going to open up the effects library by clicking on effects, top left hand corner, within the toolbox, come to effects, at the very top you have adjustment clip. Grab that, and we're going to put this over this clip here like so. Then if we give that a click, in the inspector, we have all of the same controls. So we have the dynamic zoom right within there. We can toggle it on and off as required. But as mentioned, there's a faster way. So we're not going to enable the dynamic zoom and we're going to close the inspector. Instead, if we click our little drop down, go to dynamic zoom, our on screen controls will appear. But if we hit play, the dynamic zoom isn't yet on. However, if you simply make any adjustments, so I'm just going to adjust this green one a little bit, then hit play, it's going to automatically enable the dynamic zoom. So you can turn it on just using the on-screen controls by making any kinds of adjustments. If we open up the inspector, you can see it is now enabled. We can then, of course, move it around, do any other adjustments as required. We can even right-click anywhere on the dynamic zoom controls on the preview, and then we get the easing. So I can change this one to be ease in and out, and we've simply turned it on, set the zoom amount and set the easing without using the inspector. Annoyingly, the only thing you can't do is swap them. If you want to swap them around, you have to either adjust them manually or open up the inspector, hit swap and then close the inspector. But for everything else, you can do it directly on the preview. Now, the benefit of this adjustment clip, we can do over half the length of the clip. So if we just want it to play normal and then jump in and then do a zoom, we can. Easy. And the other big benefit is you can duplicate this whenever you want. So I'm going to grab another adjustment clip and we've got a little slideshow set up here. I want to do like a Ken Burns style zoom. So give this adjustment clip a click. Let's just adjust this a little bit. Got a little zoom out. We'll right click and I want this to be an easy. Let's do an in and out. We've got a nice S curve. There we go. And if we want to copy this to all of our images on our timeline, Give the adjustment clip a click, hold the Alt key or Option if you're on a Mac, and then you can just drag to duplicate the adjustment clip, and then we've got a second one. If we highlight both of those, hold Alt, drag, now we've got four, and you can just really quickly go and duplicate these all the way across your timeline for your slides, and then you've got a nice little zoom on every single one. That's actually the only real way that you can copy and paste dynamic zooms on the timeline. Because if you were to try and do a copy and paste of the clip attribute, which is a control C to copy and then an alt or an option V to paste, there's no option to copy a dynamic zoom. So you have to do it that way. Dynamic zooms for the win. You could also then store them in power bin. So you've got them saved if you want to. Adjustment clips. They're great. <laughs> and last but not least, to finish off, two more quick tips. One, pans. You can actually use these adjustment clips to do pans as well. So they're primarily designed for zooms, but they work just as well for pans. And you can either do this manually, or there's another quick tip you can do using the cut page. So let's grab an adjustment clip and we're going to put it over this footage here like so. So to do a pan, what you do, you make both the boxes roughly the same size. And then I can put one over on the left, one over on the right, hit play, and it's going to pan across like so. Simple. If we jump into the cut page, underneath the preview window, click on this little icon here to open up the tools menu. Then click on the third one along. This is your dynamic zoom and you'll see the dynamic zoom controls. And then these three here allow you to really quickly switch from a zoom and then you can adjust it as required. The middle one is a pan and I'll just set it to a pan by default. Again, you can come and adjust it as required. And thirdly, you've got like an angle pan we should just set it up to go from top right to top left, or click on swap, we can swap them over. And if you don't want to edit on the cut page, you can jump back to the edit page and you've got your little angle dynamic zoom like so, easy. And to finish this video off, I want to show you how I use dynamic zooms all the time, whether I'm just showing a little screenshot or I'm trying to do like a sponsored section in my videos and I need to jazz it up a little bit, whatever it may be, you can use dynamic zooms in conjunction with the pitch and the pan to have that 3D 
kind of look to a relatively boring screenshot. So this is the screen recording we want to jazz up using a dynamic zoom. So first things first, grab your adjustment clip, put it on top and I'll lengthen that out. Give it a click, we'll enable our dynamic zoom controls and I need to adjust this slightly. I want this to be a zoom in, so I'm gonna swap them around and then I'm gonna move my red box up into the top left hand corner. So now we've got a nice simple zoom in like so. Now the next thing I need to do is adjust the transform controls. So I wanna jazz it up using a bit of pitch and yaw. Because I want to see what I'm doing, if we just turn off the dynamic zoom controls, I can actually see the zoom levels on the timeline like this. And then let's give it a bit of pitch maybe, a bit of yaw, maybe change the position, give it a bit of angle. You know, adjust this to get it to your liking and then if you hit play, you've got a nice 3D style effect. Now, if you're on the studio version, the last thing I like to do within the effects library, go to open effects and search for the tilt shift blur. Pop that on your adjustment clip. You can then select the open effects overlay. A bit hard to see in my example, but there's a little control you can move to change the focal point. Adjust this, let's go with something like that. And you've turned a boring screenshot or screen grab into a 3D style effect with a tilt shift blur. Simple. And I think that about covers everything you need to know about using dynamic zooms within DaVinci Resolve. If you found this useful, give me a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.